Hello, everyone, and welcome to take advantage of $156,000 in free digital advertising with the Google and Microsoft ad grants for nonprofits with Community Boost. This workshop is being recorded and slides will be shared afterwards, so please keep your eyes peeled for a follow-up email later today in case you want to review anything uh, that we go over. In case it's your first time here, this free workshop is an instrumental partner workshop. These are collaborations between instrumental and community partners provide free educational opportunities for nonprofit professionals. Our goal is to tackle a problem that folks often have to solve for while also sharing different ways that Instrumental's platform can help grant writers and nonprofits win more grants. Instrumental is the institutional fundraising platform. If you want to bring grant prospecting, tracking, or management to one place, we can help you do that. And you can set up your own personalized grant recommendations using the link on the screen, which also drop in the Zoom chat in just a little bit. Lastly, be sure to stick around for today's entire presentation. At the end, we'll be sharing some freebie resources from Community Boost, as well as ourselves. More to come after Emily and Reagan's presentation. With that housekeeping out of the way, I'm very excited to introduce both Emily and Reagan. Emily uses search ads to combine aspects of creativity and data analysis to help nonprofits when it comes to furthering their goals. And Reagan is the Director of Revenue for Community Boost Consulting, where he oversees research and development of new advertising channels to ensure that Community Boost Consulting is consistently offering the most relevant digital marketing services to their clients. We ask that if you have any questions along the way, please include three hashtags in front of them so that it can be more easily distinguished in the Zoom chat. Yes, recordings are going to be shared afterwards as well as slides, so no need to ask that question. And with that, uh, Reagan and Emily, feel free to take it away. All righty. Yeah, Emily, do you wanna share your screen? Yeah. Um, yeah are you while you're getting... While you're getting that pulled up, I can uh, I can kind of <laughs> do a quick intro. Is this is this on your screen, Em? Right now. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining today. Um, as mentioned, we're going to be talking about how you can unlock one hundred and fifty six thousand dollars in free ad spend through both the Google Ad Grant and Microsoft Ads for Social Impact program. Um, right at the very beginning, I do want to <laughs> preface something. Uh, when we originally booked this webinar, the Microsoft Ad Grant was in a pilot program uh, from July all the way through December. That has uh, closed uh, at the moment. Uh, it is going to reopen. We'll talk about that. Um, but I did want to preface that at the beginning because that was not the original intention. We wanted to talk about how you could utilize it right now. Um, so we'll focus more of the presentation today on the Google Ad Grant side, and then we'll talk through some of the, the research and findings that we've had on the Microsoft side um, and make sure that you're in the loop on how you can take advantage of it once that program uh, reopens. So, um, you know, just to give a quick introduction to Community Boost, um, well, actually, let me do this poll first. Uh, I think something that could be really helpful is to understand kind of where everybody's at with the Google Ad Grant or Microsoft Ad Grant. I know a lot of organizations may already have this. Some of you may not have either of them. Uh, so go ahead and respond to the poll and we'd love to just get a pulse of uh, kind of who's here and, and uh, what, what you guys already know. So let it go for a second. Awesome. And I'll go ahead and share these results since people are really quick at answering this poll. We're at 77% of the folks uh, having answered it, or now 80%. So let's go ahead and share these results here. Okay. So uh, there's a decent percent that does have the Google Ad Grant. Doesn't look like anybody has the Microsoft Ad Grant. So no one was able to get into that pilot program. Although actually it looks like there's a few of you who have both the Microsoft Ad Grant and the Google Ad Grant. So about 4%. And then the rest of you uh, don't have either. So um, cool. Well, I mean, no matter where you are in this process, that's okay. Um, just want to make sure we kind of uh, cater our content um, to make sure it's it's relevant to the individuals who are here. So um, now I'll get into just a quick introduction of Community Boost. Uh, we are a nonprofit uh, focused digital marketing agency. We exist to empower social ventures that are changing the world. We've been working in the nonprofit space for a little over 10 years. Um, and in 2022 supported a little over 500 uh, nonprofits directly and their digital marketing services. Um, those organizations range from some of the you know top in the market like 
Charity Water, Equal Justice Initiative, Cancer Research Institute, Kiva, um, but we also work with numerous, you know, theaters, museums, local United Ways. I saw Loaves and Fishes is in here today, and I know we've worked with Loaves and Fishes before. So, um, you know, super excited. Uh, no matter what size your your nonprofit is or what what part of the industry you're in, uh, there is something that you know we can help you with, whether it's directly or through resources like this webinar today. Um, we're also the host of the Nonprofit Marketing Summit. I don't know if any of you have attended that in the past, uh, but we typically in any given year serve a little over 50,000 uh, nonprofit leaders through the, the Marketing Summit, and we'll, we'll provide some links to that later today. Um, in 2023, we're looking to help generate a little over $50 million uh, for our clients through uh, advertising. And currently our team is about 66 uh, total team members with kind of the intent to grow to a little over 100 team members in uh, 2023. So super excited to, to chat with you all today. I know we uh, already kind of did introductions, so I think we can skip the um, next two slides. But again, I'm Reagan, and this is Emily, and I'll pass it to her. Yeah, uh, thanks, Reagan. Uh, yeah, we already did those intros, but I just wanted to say I'm just super grateful to be talking to you all today, especially about the Google Ad Grant. Um, I do kind of nerd out on search ads and the Google Ad Grant because I think it's just a great way for nonprofits to drive traffic to their site and get meaningful results. So um, kind of going through the agenda today, we're first going to talk about what is the Google Ad Grant. We'll see some examples of the Google Ad Grant in action and how to apply for the Google Ad Grant. And then I'll pass it over to Reagan. And again, right now the Microsoft program is on pause, but it's still really important to know this information for when it does come back. And there is still action that you can take to get into the program and to learn more about Microsoft. So before we cover the Google Ad Grant, I think it's really important to just cover the basics of search advertising. So this page should look pretty familiar. This is the Google search engine results page. And sometimes, you know, as marketers, we can get kind of caught up in, you know, these specific channels that um, might be a little confusing on the back end. And, you know, you might get caught up in your own messaging internally. And while it's really important to have consistent messaging across channels with Google search in particular, it's important to remember, you know, you are a Google searcher yourself, most likely. And so this, you know, page should look really familiar to you. And you know that when you go to Google and you're making a search, you're typically looking to have a question answered, or you're looking to get more information, or in some cases, you're looking to take immediate action. And so that's the example here. We have the example of someone typing into the uh, search engine, best nonprofits to donate to. So that's what we call a search term. And so we can see once someone searches for that, these are the listings that show up on the search engine results page. So at the bottom here, we can see organic results. And so the way that you can improve your organic results is through search engine optimization or SEO. So this is a bit of a longer term game. It can potentially take a few months, uh, maybe even a year to get to the top spot on the first page for search engine uh, optimization and results. And so this is really important. We do encourage people to work on their SEO because once you get on the first page, you're more consistently on the first page and you show up more often when someone searches for something like best nonprofits to donate to. So that's really important and we really do encourage it. Um, but in the meantime, a way that we can get to the top of the page almost immediately is through search ads and specifically the Google ad grant. So you can see the top results here. Um, Google's making it, you know, a little bit trickier to tell what is an ad and what is not, but you can kind of see in the upper left hand side, uh, the little ad indication there. And so in this uh, particular example, we have four ad results. Um, and so it's just really important to utilize search advertising again to just get to the top of the page while you're working on your SEO and if any of you have the Google Ad Grant which I saw you know in that poll some of you do um, it's really important if you are creating ads to also include image extensions so that's that little picture that you can see on the upper right hand side obviously it just provides more context for the organization and it entices people to look at that ad and click on it and so um, this is kind of what we're talking about when we're talking about Google Ads search advertising and the ad grant this is where your ads are showing up and so this is a little deeper dive into the anatomy of a Google ad. And so we have the final URL and display path, which is really just the landing page that you're sending traffic to. So the particular page on your site. And then we have the headlines, which you can see are hyperlinked there. So that's what people are clicking on when they click on your ad. And so that's why it's really important when you're coming up with headlines, you do want headlines that really relate to what someone typed in. Because again, if you kind of take yourself back to your everyday Google search user, 
you're really looking for the result that's going to answer your question most closely or provide the information that you're looking for. And so you want your headlines to be really specific to what someone is typing into Google. You can also include more information about your organization, uh, maybe calls to action. And so that's kind of how we create headlines. And with descriptions, you can see you have more opportunity to elaborate on those things, like what your organization does, what someone can expect when they reach the landing page that you're sending traffic to. So now I'm going to get into what actually is the Google Ad Grant. So we have a lot of professionals here familiar with grants. And so this term should be very familiar. But the Google Ad Grant is probably a little bit different from what you're thinking of when you hear the word grant. So the Google Ad Grant is really just a Google Ads account that uses Google's free money in order to show those ads on the search engine results page. Um, and so a nonprofit can have a separate paid account where they're paying you know, their own money to show ads, maybe video ads or ads on the display network. But for search ads, you can have a Google Ad Grant account where it's $10,000 a month of free advertising of Google's money on their search engine results page. And so a key difference here that might be different from a traditional grant is that the Google Ad Grant money remains in effect indefinitely. So you don't have to you know, reapply in a year or two once you get the Google Ad Grant, your organization has it. And it's important to note that there are certain uh, stipulations and policies that Google has in place uh, that do need to be followed in order to maintain your Google Ad Grant account. So they do just want to make sure that uh, grantees are serving high quality ads that relate to the keywords in their account and relate to what the organization actually does. So at the, at the end of the day, Google is still very focused on user experience. And so they do just want to make sure these accounts are high quality. Um, so you do want to make sure that you're following those policies in order to keep your grant, you know, live and active, you know, all the time. But again, the grant money doesn't necessarily go away. You don't have to reapply or anything like that. And it's important to note that the money does not roll over month over month if it's not spent, but there aren't any repercussions if the full 10K is not spent. So it's really just $10,000 a month there for you to use for your organization um, if you spend $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, it's all the same to Google, but you can take advantage of the full 10,000 every single month. And so the real power of the Google Ad Grant lies in what we call the digital marketing funnel. And so the funnel really just describes the kind of beginning and end of a user journey when they are a brand new user and they get to your site and then kind of moving them through that funnel to knowing a little bit more about your organization, maybe signing up for a newsletter and, and learning more about what you do. And then eventually and hopefully then becoming supporters and brand advocates and people who are really plugged into your nonprofit. So the Google Ad Grant and search ads in general works really well for the top of the funnel traffic in this digital marketing funnel. And so what I mean by that is it's really good at generating new users and website traffic to your site. Because again, if we go back to that example of best nonprofits to donate to, if someone types that in and clicks on your ad, it's likely that they've never heard of your organization before. So that's a brand new user who's just getting to your website and looking to learn more. And so that can help increase awareness, education, and engagement. So maybe they get to your site and again, they could watch a video or maybe click out to your socials. Once they get to your site, they can also generate leads. They can want to learn more by signing up for a newsletter or maybe signing up for an event um, or maybe submitting a form or petition or anything that you have to offer where you're asking for their information and for them to kind of do a little bit more. And then from there, uh, towards the bottom of the funnel, the ad grant can also help drive donations, sales, enrollments. Um, so those things that people are really looking to take action on, like donating um, if you are an animal organization, maybe adopting an animal, or if you have an online shop, it can also work well um, if you're trying to sell different goods. So the Google Ad Grant works really well on kind of the entire funnel, but especially at the top where we're just trying to get new users to the site um, and get them to engage. So now we're gonna look at some examples of the Google Ad Grant in action. So this organization is called Zero Breast Cancer. Their mission is to promote breast cancer risk reduction. And so their goal with using the Google Ad Grant was to increase site traffic, brand awareness, and resource utilization. And so the solution here was to add keywords that were related to those resources, which were blog posts, guides and downloadable infographics, fact sheets, and activity books. And so again, the importance here is that we are connecting people who are going to Google and looking for more information about breast cancer, whether um, 
whether they want to learn more about symptoms or, um, you know, have a loved one who has breast cancer and want to learn how to support them. We just want to connect people with um, what they're searching and provide resources and more information. And so we also created high quality ads that related to those keywords. Like I said, when you're creating headlines and descriptions for these ads, you really want to relate to what someone is typing into Google. You want to have calls to action to get them to click on the ad and to take action from there. And so the results, as you can see, is an overall increase in site traffic um, and then also an increase in direct traffic. So this is pretty normal. We do often see once an organization implements the Google ad grant, an increase in a lot of other channels. And that's because like I was talking about, most people who are typing into Google are typing in a non-branded term. So something like best nonprofits to donate to. So once they get to your site and learn a little bit more about you, if they come to your site a second time, maybe a few weeks later, they're probably not gonna just type in best nonprofits to donate to again and then get to your site that way. They probably will have bookmarked your site or we'll just type in your organization's name directly into Google and get to your site from there. So for that reason, we do just see an increase of people, you know, knowing about your organization with that increased brand awareness, or maybe even clicking on one of those organic listings that isn't an ad. Um, so the ad grant can help, you know, not just in its own bubble, but with other channels as well. And so the next organization I'm going to go over is Habitat for Humanity in Greensboro. And their mission is to build affordable, high quality, energy efficient and sustainable houses that families are proud to call home. And so their goal is also to increase site traffic, but also increase volunteer engagement and then purchases and donations to their restore, which is basically their home appliance thrift store. And so we were able to add in a variety of keywords around different things like home ownership, volunteering, shopping and donating for home goods. And the beauty of the Google ad grant is that you can be going after different pockets of traffic and different audiences and serving different goals at one time. And that's kind of the difference between a lot of other marketing channels where you maybe have to choose one focus for the month or one focus for the quarter because of budget. With the Google ad grant, you're able to run multiple campaigns at a time and you can run them on a pretty evergreen uh, status. So you can run them every month of the year. And in this example, we also used Google's predetermined categories to target their typical audiences and their interests. So people who are interested in home improvement and home furnishing and home decor enthusiasts. So we're just kind of, we're able to hone in on the more target audience from there. And you can see the results here. Impressions are really just the amount of times that their ads showed up on the search engine results page. And you can see over 4,000 clicks directly to their site and then an increase in their goals from there. So people who are looking to volunteer and to shop and to donate goods. So now that we know the basics of search advertising and a little bit more about the Google Ad Grant, I'm gonna dive into actually how you get the Google Ad Grant. So in terms of eligibility, you do have to be a 501c3 nonprofit and you do have to be registered through Google for nonprofits. Um, so as long as you're a 501c3 nonprofit, you are eligible. So again, that might be a little bit of a difference compared to a typical grant. There's not as much competition. It's really just as long as you qualify, Google will accept you. Um, and so you also do have to have a functional website. And some ways that Google measures this is uh, with making sure that there's no broken links or 404 errors. So you just want to make sure that your website is high quality, the user experience is top notch, and that there are no areas that people are kind of landing on and not getting the information that they need. Um, you also wanna secure your site with HTTPS. So I would recommend just talking to a web developer or someone who can help you with that. So just some good things to clean up on your site before you apply for the Google Ad Grant. So there are some organizations that aren't eligible within this category, and that would be governmental organizations, hospitals, schools, and fiscally sponsored organizations. So. We do recommend just going ahead and applying for Google for Nonprofits if you have any doubt. You know, the worst that can happen is you apply and then tell you that, you know, you're not eligible. But again, for the most part, if you are a 501c3 nonprofit, you will get the Google Ad Grant. So we do recommend um, just going through with that process because I'll outline in a second. It is pretty easy. Um, so just some other stipulations here. Ads can't offer financial products like mortgages and credit cards. Um, you also can't ask for those bigger donations like cars, boats, and property donations. So there are just a few rules, but generally it's a pretty open program and pretty easy to follow. 
So the process for the Google Ad Grant application is actually fairly simple. It's really more about getting access to the proper account rather than, you know, submitting um, these applications where you've written paragraphs about why you should get the Google Ad Grant and why you should qualify. You can kind of take that out of your head. Again, it's really just getting access to these proper platforms that allow you to apply. So the first platform that you have to get access to is TechSoup. And really TechSoup is just the third party tool that Google uses to verify your charity status. So it's pretty easy. It's, it's like creating any other account. Um, you just need to submit your IRS determination letter just to verify that you are um, a 501c3 nonprofit. And then from there, once you're verified on TechSoup, you create a Google for Nonprofits account. And this takes five minutes or less. Um, and this is kind of the hub from where you're going to apply for the Google Ad Grant. So once you get into Google for Nonprofits, uh, you go into your account and click activate, and then you fill out what's called an eligibility form. So this should take 20 minutes or less. Again, the answers really have no bearing on whether or not you actually get the grant. It's just so that Google has more information about the grantees that are in the program. So it'll just ask you things like, what is your annual budget? What are your marketing goals? Are there any times of year where you know, you're really honing in on those marketing goals? And so it's really just informational for Google. Um, so once you submit that eligibility form, then you submit your activation for review and you should hear back within three business days from the Google Ad Grants team. So again, if you kind of go through this process linearly and get access to these accounts, um, you're looking you know, to do this in a week or less potentially. And so once you have the Google Ad Grant account, this is where the more heavy lifting comes in, to be honest. So it's really the application is fairly easy but creating a high quality built out account will take a little bit more time. And we do recommend just setting a really solid foundation from the beginning and kind of trying to take advantage of the full $10,000 per month right off the bat. And so that requires creating campaigns with ad groups and keywords in it and understanding who your target audience is and, and finding those keywords that will relate to them and then creating those high quality ads. Um, so the first step would just be to outline the campaign structure based on your organization's goals. From there, you do keyword research to see what searches actually have search volume. There are really cool tools that you can use to see what people are actually searching for and what they have searched for over the last year, two years, or five years. And then from there, you create those high quality ads that are related to the keywords, the ads that will show up on the search engine results page. And once you have that really solid foundation laid out, we do recommend continually optimizing your account to either scale results or maintain results. So again, at the beginning, we're looking at looking, or sorry, we're looking at working in an account maybe once a week. Um, but after a few months, once you get your account to the place that you want it to be at, um, you can optimize it maybe twice a month, once a month, just making sure that you have continual eyes in the account and you're making changes so that Google knows that you're taking advantage of the account. It's definitely not a set it and forget it type of platform. It's very dynamic and can always be improved. And so this just outlines the account structure in your Google Ad Grant account. And this would function in the same way for a paid Google Ads account as well. Um, the bones are kind of the same here. So you have your account and within your account, you have multiple campaigns. Again, we are able to target uh, kind of those multiple goals and audiences so we can have uh, as many campaigns really running at the same time as we want. And so within a campaign, you have ad groups. And ad groups are really just the houses for the keywords and ads. Um, and so this is kind of the typical structure, again, for an ad grant account or a Google paid account. And this might be a lot of jargon, but you know, once you get this down, the good thing is Again, it's going to be kind of the same, whether you're working in an ad grant account or a paid account or even Microsoft. So Microsoft pretty clearly mirrors Google. So once you have Google down, the transition to Microsoft is really easy. Um, so this will all kind of hold up when you're creating you know, multiple accounts. So um, to kind of transition into the Microsoft ad grant and Microsoft program, I'm going to hand it off to Reagan. Perfect. Well, I will uh, move the screen share over to my computer. And I saw a ton of questions in here. We are going to have a Q&A section at the end and any that we don't get to, you can absolutely reach out to us. We'll, we'll get you a response. Um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll we'll dive in. Um, so, you know, Emily just talked a little bit about the uh, Google Ad Grant, which absolutely 
I mean, no matter what category of nonprofit you're in, as long as you do have a 501c3, I recommend applying. I know we talked about some of those categories that, you know, Google says may not be eligible, but I, again, I interpret that as may not. I've gotten plenty of schools, medical institutions approved when we thought that they wouldn't. Um, so it's always worth trying. Uh, but now we're going to move and talk a little bit more about the Microsoft Ads for Social Impact program, which is very similar to the Google offer. Again, as I prefaced at the very beginning, when we originally booked this webinar, it was still an open beta that has currently closed. Um, but it is going to hopefully be reopening again later this year, according to what the Microsoft team has told us. Um, the first thing I do want to talk about, though, is who's even using Microsoft. I think when we talk about the Google ad grant, the value of showing up on the front page of Google is pretty clear because most of us use that where, you know, even when we first heard about the Microsoft ad grant, I think our, our first impression was, that's really cool, but does, do people even use Microsoft? Like, do people use Bing? Um, and so, you know, for me, I get really into data and research. And before we started to decide whether or not we wanted to move down this path, we wanted to first understand who's even using Microsoft. And, and we were actually pretty surprised. Um, when we talk about Microsoft, especially Microsoft Search, it is not just Bing. Um, that partner network is pretty large. So from a search standpoint, it's made up of things like Bing, Yahoo, AOL. Um, but Microsoft also owns LinkedIn. And there's some really interesting data that Microsoft is able to collect from your LinkedIn profile that can be used to influence targeting options in the uh, Microsoft ads account. Um, Microsoft like being powers uh, Amazon Alexa. So as we want to get more into that voice search market, right, um, focusing on both your Microsoft SEO and ad strategy can make sense if you think that your audience is using Alexa. Um, again, that network is absolutely massive and it's going to continue to grow i mean microsoft is making investments i don't know how many of you are familiar with the term chat gpt but microsoft is a major investor in that which is going to completely change the way that we think a lot of organic search is is going to work and uh that that whole network is likely uh to to grow pretty significantly over the next five years um as far as data and who's actually using the platform in the us alone there's about 117 million unique monthly searchers with about 7.2 billion searches happening monthly, right? We, when we go and we search things, we're not typically just searching once a month. I make multiple searches every single day. Um, and while the mobile market share of the Microsoft network is pretty small, um, the desktop market share is, is large. It's about 38% currently of all desktop users in the US have uh, Bing or one of the Microsoft search networks as their uh, primary um, search engine. And there is 44 million people out of the 117 million that only use the Microsoft search engine. So, right, there is a lot of people who might use Microsoft on their desktop because it's the default search engine and they just left it there, but then they go on their phone and they open up Safari and it automatically goes to Google. Um, but there are 44 million people where if we are not focused on either our organic SEO um, on Microsoft or doing something like the Microsoft ads for social impact, um, we might be losing out on a market of 44 million total people. And, you know, I think another thing to, to note is from a goal perspective, right? Like, you know, yes, there's people searching, but are they the types of people who would be able to donate to us or be able to convert with us? I know that there's tons of different nonprofit goals that are out there. I'd say majority of the ones that we run into are more in that kind of fundraising volunteer side, but we work with tons of theaters and museums, et cetera. Uh, but when we talk specifically about like that donor goal, when we look at who the best donor prospects are, it's typically someone that's over the age of 50. Uh, the data says that they're typically in committed relationships or empty nesters. They typically have children over over the age of six, which is probably more tied to the, the age demographics that we're seeing as well, um, and a household income of a, over $100,000 a year, where when we look at the data of who is on the Microsoft search network, um, it's overwhelmingly in our favor. So over 50% of individuals are over the age of 45 uh, that are searching on the Microsoft search network. Uh, more than half of those individuals, uh, of total individuals are married or living with a partner. Over half of them have children in the household. And about 35% of individuals using Microsoft has a house uh, on the, in the US network have a household income uh, over $100,000 with almost 50% of that audience having an income of over $75,000 a year. So, you know, I'm not saying that there is more overall individuals because Google does get more searches. There is more people using Google than Microsoft. 
But when we look at the percentage of people who fall in our right category, it is higher in that sense. So when we run an ad, someone clicks on it, the chance that they fall into our ideal demographic is higher than really anywhere else at the moment. Um, Another really interesting data point that Microsoft is able to provide is that uh, comparatively to Google, uh, the average conversion value, so how much someone is spending when they make a purchase through the Microsoft ne uh, search network is about 30% uh, higher uh, than, than the Google network. So another really, you know, fun fact for us, right? Like I, if someone's going to donate $100, I, it, but they have the option to potentially donate 130 instead, I'd rather take the 130 but, you know, I think we all would. Um, so that's a little bit of like who is actually using the network, which I think helps build a case that it's worth taking the time and effort to move here. Um, but just like Google, they, Microsoft knows the value of showing up on the front page, which is why typically if you want to get there in those first few positions, you'd have to pay to be there. But just like Google saw an opportunity to let nonprofits get that space for essentially free, um, Microsoft wanted to launch something similar. So they launched their Ads for Social Impact program back in July of this year, um, where nonprofits could join and get $3,000 a month in ad spend rather than Google's 10,000. However, there are some really unique capabilities within Microsoft that do not exist in Google. So the Google ad grant, something to, to know is that, you know, when you want to show up on Google and you use your micro, or you use your Google ad grant, you're only going to show up about 10% of the time on average for the keywords you want to go after, which causes challenges when, you know, those really specific terms, like not just donate to nonprofits, but donate to melanoma awareness. Like that's a much more specific search. Uh, but if someone's searching it and you provide those services, they're more likely to convert. But because it's so specific, there's less people that search it, which makes it so that, yeah, you can show up for it, but you probably aren't getting enough clicks to really make an impact. Where on the Microsoft side, you show up closer to 60% of the time. Um, so even with less those keywords that are really specific and have less search volume, you're getting about three times the amount of overall clicks on those keywords, which allow you to, to actually take advantage of that. So um, other than that, it is very similar, but besides that to the Google side, um, what we ended up doing is we took a, a cohort of our current clients that were already using the Google ad grant. And we wanted to see like, if we were to take the exact same keywords we were already using, the exact same ads, the exact same strategies and copy and pasted it over to Microsoft, like what would the algorithm do differently, which is how we got a lot of this data. And so even with less money, we did see that we showed up more often on Microsoft. So about 60% of the time, versus Google is 10% of the time. And because of that, we ended up getting more overall impressions. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with that term, an impression is uh, how often essentially um, like those ads were seen. So it's not 22,000 individuals. Some individuals might have seen it twice. Some might have seen it once. Some might have seen it six times. Um, but our ads were seen 22,000 times with $3,000 were in Google. With $10,000, they were only seen about 15,000 times. So again, the power even with less money of that impression share led to more people seeing it. Um, there is less competition on Microsoft because I think there is a lot of advertisers who have this kind of stigma against like Microsoft of yeah, people aren't really searching there. So the, the competition is less. So the cost per click was less as well. Um, so where a click on average would cost us $6.75 on Google, it only cost about $4.98 on Microsoft. Um, but again, it is less overall money. So the total number of clicks that we got was about 602 with that budget, where on the Google side, it was closer to um, 1400. So a little, even though it is about a third of the budget, it was, you know, not quite a third of the amount of clicks. Um, but, you know, knowing this, right, uh, you want to use that to your advantage. So I don't necessarily recommend copying and pasting the build. That was more to get a clear data comparison. But knowing that we're going to show up more often, knowing that our cost is a little bit cheaper, we can find the holes that our Google Ad Grant has, the keywords that are really hard to go after, um, and use those specifically on the Microsoft search network. Um, so what are the requirements here? Again, it's almost like copy and pasted from Google, in my opinion. So on Google, you would go through, get your Google for Nonprofits account account set up with Microsoft, you get your Microsoft for nonprofits account set up, you get verified through TechSoup, they just make sure that you are eligible. Um, from there, right, you have to have a functional website, you can't send ads to a website that doesn't exist or doesn't work. So um, obviously, we would need that there. And I know there were some questions on what is, you know, counts as a functional website. So we can talk through that. Um, and just like Google, there is, uh, you know, 
issues with governmental organizations, hospitals, schools, childcare centers. Again, I always recommend applying just like Google. We've seen some get through, but for my experience, some of those that we were able to get through on the Google side uh, that fell in that kind of school or hospital type of group um, were, even though they got approved for the Google side, were not approved for Microsoft. So it doesn't hurt. These applications don't take that long. So it's worth doing. Um, worst they're going to say is no. Um, but other than that, not a whole lot of other restrictions. Um, from an application process standpoint, again, you're gonna first fill out that Microsoft for nonprofits form. It'll take about 10 days for them to review everything, make sure that you are who you say you are, you're a nonprofit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, from there, once the program reopens, there's gonna be a link that you can fill out where um, that you will fill out like a form of it's like maybe 10, 15 questions. It's not very long. Um, you submit that. And the reason they have you do that separately is there's the, the uh, description of who can actually get into the Microsoft for Nonprofits program is a lot bigger than who can get into the Ag Grant program. So you might get the Microsoft for Nonprofits as a hospital, but not the Ag Grant itself. So they separate those um, those application processes. And then if you do get approved for the Microsoft Ag Grant, very similar to Google, you'd then move into uh, where the real work begins, I would say, is just building the campaigns, doing the keyword research, um, building the ads and optimizing to make sure you're getting you know, the best cost per click um, and getting the most for, for your dollars. Um, at the moment, uh, like I said, this has been paused, but what we can do is if you are interested on the Microsoft ad grant side of things, um, you can scan this QR code right here. Um, we do have direct contacts with the people who run the program. They have been you know, intentionally vague because they don't want anybody giving a hard date and they have to push it and it's bad PR. Um, but like I said, it should come out this year. We'll know in advance. So if you scan that link, um, and sign up for that email list. As soon as we hear the date that everything's gonna be starting again, uh, we'll reach out to everybody on that list and let you know, hey, it's time to get started uh, so that you can be way ahead of the curve. Um, there's gonna be a lot of people who end up applying, the line's gonna get long and would like to get you, uh, you know, ultimately ahead of the, the queue there. So I'll leave that up for a couple seconds more and then we'll move to here. And again, we, we'll send out this slide deck too. So if you missed it, um, you can always go back and scan it after. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, is unrelated to the Microsoft or Google Ad Grant, um, but as I mentioned at the beginning, we are the host of the Nonprofit Marketing Summit. Um, if you're wanting to continue to boost your understanding of marketing or you have a marketing team at your organization who wants to learn more about different types of platforms and hear from really the best of the best in the space, um, our uh, Nonprofit Marketing Summit, the big innovation is happening from February 28th through March 2nd, so three days. If you scan that link, it is free. Um, it's all online, so you don't have to worry about flying anywhere. You can attend the sessions you want. You can skip the uh, sections that you don't want to see. Um, but I, I recommend applying, uh, going through and signing up for that. Emily's going to be a speaker. I'm going to be a speaker. Uh, but we also have uh, names like Vic Harrison, who's Scott Harrison from Charity Water's Wife. She's going to be speaking with us. We have Vu Lee. Um, uh, Beth Cantor, about 66 other uh, speakers at that. So highly recommend that you do that and sign up. Um, and then finally, uh, we'll open it up to Q&A here after I say this last thing, but uh, if you do have specific questions, either about the Google Ad Grant or Microsoft Ad Grant, if they don't get answered in the Q&A, um, or it's more tied to like something, a specific issue you've run into, um, scan this link. We can definitely set up some time to have you talk with my team um, and we can help kind of troubleshoot some of those more specific uh, issues you may be having. So I'll go ahead and stop there. And uh, Will, are we opening it up to Q&A now? Yeah, before we get, open it up to q and I wanted to do a quick uh, share as well for folks uh, on Instrumental in case it's your first time here. Uh, Instrumental is the institutional fundraising platform. If you are looking to bring your grant work into a single source of truth, we can help you do that. And uh, Community Boost has a link as well that you can look at. It'll be in the follow-up materials today. Uh, the main things that we see from folks is that in their first year of using us, we raise 200K more in grants. Uh, we save them a significant amount of time, three hours a week per good fit funder they find, as well as increase their grant application output by one and a half times within a year. And nine out of 10 of our users say that they developed a stronger grant strategy. So if you're ever looking to level up your grants calendars and put all of the work that you're doing around your grants in a single 
all all knowing source of truth, then definitely check that out. And um, with that side of things, uh, we do have some some a number of questions. Um, but if you want to follow up with uh, Community Boost as well. You can, you can follow up with Candice, uh, who's been in the chat as well, Candice at communityboost.org. Uh, here are some of the links as well, jot down that code, and I'll start to field some of these questions now and leave while I leave that up for a bit. Um, Damari asked, with regard to the Google Ad Grant, are there any reporting requirements that nonprofits have to follow or adhere to? No, no reporting requirements. Um... Yeah, really the only stipulations would be, um, you know, Google has kind of a compliance policy guide. I don't want to get into too much of the jargon, but they just basically have rules for um, click-through rate, which is just um, making sure people are clicking your ads often enough for how often they're shown on the search engine results page. Um, and really just rules that ensure that your account is high quality and high functioning. Um, but aside from that, no reporting requirements. Awesome. And Melissa asked, how many hours a week would you dedicate in terms of managing your Google Ads grant? And I'm assuming that means for somebody doing it in-house. Yeah. Um, kind of like I talked about in my portion, uh, we do dedicate a lot of time up front when you're first setting up campaigns and ads. And so that could be, you know, anywhere from five to eight hours initially, just to get that really solid foundation. You can create campaigns incrementally, of course, but again, we like to just kind of get ads up and running so that you're taking advantage of, you know, the $10,000 a month that you have. Um, from there, it kind of depends on the results that you're seeing. If you're still having a hard time reaching that full 10,000, we do recommend being in the account every week, maybe for 45 minutes. Um, if you are seeing the results initially that you're looking for in order to maintain, you can maybe be in the account twice a month um, for 45 minutes each um, and kind of on the lower end, maybe once a month. But Google does require changes at least once a month just to make sure that you are going into the account and checking up on things and continually improving it. Yeah, and I would say, I mean, just like most things, you, you're gonna get out what you put in. So, and it's not always in a, it's not always time specific, right? Like I know people that might need to spend four times the amount of time that I would to get the same results, but there's a level of experience that I have where I, I don't have to think through certain things because I've already like learned those lessons. And so, um, you know, it really depends on your familiarity with how to navigate the accounts, how to choose the right things. You could see the exact same level of success from an hour of high quality work that someone else could see in 10 hours of if they were to choose all of the wrong keywords, right? So um, yeah, I, I guess it's, it's not really a mix of like how often, I would say at minimum, you should check in once a week. Um, but, you know, it's how long you're spending is really just dependent on how happy are you with the results that you're getting at the moment. Um, if you're spending a lot, but it's not giving you the results that you want, take extra time and delete the things that aren't working and, and free up budget to <laughs> test new strategies that hopefully would work. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. And Spurs FC asked, what if we've had difficulty in getting approved for the Google Ads grant or issues with meeting the website requirements? Is there any additional help? Um, I feel like that could be a good place to share that QR code link for booking a time with you guys. Yeah, Google also does have uh, tools that you can measure site speed. And I would say site speed is one of the biggest issues that we come across when we're talking about the you know high quality website. So using those tools, and then if you do have a website developer, someone who can kind of help you speed up your site, that is a great place to start. Um, and like I mentioned on my slide as well, if there are any broken links or 404 errors, you can um, reach out to Google support if you're having issues with that. Um, even if you don't have the ad green, you can, you know, kind of try and reach out and see if they can find any links that are broken. Or again, a web developer is really helpful with that. So those are kind of the two main areas that we see issues with websites. One yeah, of the questions think... that, oh, go ahead. Uh Sorry, Emily, the other thing that isn't there something that they should have at kind of the footer of their website too. Mm -hmm. I know we've run into those issues, but yeah, it is really helpful to have your EIN on the footer. Um, if not a complete dedicated page, just that talks about, you know, your organization, what you do, um, maybe even having some financial statements in there that does help with the verification process so that Google can easily go to your site you know, see your EIN, your charity status, who you are. So yeah, that is really helpful to have your EIN in the footer of your site. Uh, Rob had asked earlier, and I know this was initially answered in the responses of whether or not 
$10,000 a month is a significant amount in search advertising. I'm curious just in general, what you guys see for the cost per click in the nonprofit space, just for folks to have some general sense of how costly it is there, as well as I noticed a lot of the stats that were shared is around raw traffic, but how do you guys conceptualize that in terms of tracking towards the goals of how much they've actually raised from like the awareness that comes from those campaigns? Yeah, great, great questions. I'll start by just it, the the first question, which is is ten thousand uh, dollars a lot? It, it absolutely is. Like compared to you know, if you were not a nonprofit, you didn't have the five hundred one c three. If you wanted to sp like spend ten thousand dollars, you would have to spend ten thousand real dollars, right? So community boost, for example, we're not a nonprofit ourselves. If we wanted to you know run search ads like we're probably not spending anywhere close to $10,000 a month in our own real money because it's a lot of money. Uh, so it's, yeah, my answer is yes, it's a very significant amount. The difference though is again, knowing those Google ad grant stipulations of you're only showing about 10% of the time, like there are keywords that since we're paying real money, uh, we can show up for and and see a lot of success with and be competitive with where um, you are going to be less competitive with the free money that Google is giving you. So um, again, there's pros and cons to spending real money versus doing the the grant, but I would say there's almost actually no con of doing the grant because you could, you could always spend real money on top of that if you wanted to you get all the pros, the cons, like it's, it's free money. Like, yeah. So I don't know if that helps answer it, but it's a lot. As a follow-up question that I'm curious if you guys see any difference in terms of the free money versus the dollars that people are actually spending. Like, is there a tier order of how they're allocating that from like Google's side or is it um, consistent across? Yeah, I can answer that or Emily, if you want to, it's up to you. Yeah, um, there is a little bit of a tiered system. So Google ad grant ads will always show below paid ads. Um, you can't tell on the search engine results page what is an ad grant ad and what's a paid ad. So it all looks the same. Um, so that is the advantage of having, you know, an additional paid account if it makes sense for competitive keywords that you're wanting to go after because you can get even more to the top of the page more consistently. Um, all of that to say, I mean, we still have many organizations that do spend the full $10,000 a month and are driving, you know, hundreds, thousands of clicks to the site every month. So even with the limitations of, you know, showing up around 10% of the time and showing below paid accounts, you can still drive so much traffic and get results through the ad grant. But yeah, there are certain advantages of using a paid account if you want to even bolster your presence on the search engine results page even more. And that is what, to Reagan's point in his section, the advantage of the Microsoft grant, where there is just one, one auction. So ad grant ads, paid ads, it's all the same. So that is the difference between the Microsoft and the uh, Google ad grant account. So Reagan, do you want to add anything more to that? No, I mean, I, I think the, the other piece is just like, you know, do we see a difference in the overall conversions that happen or kind of, kind of answering that piece of the question? I mean, there is a difference, right? Because you're less competitive um, and you show up less often, like you can't go as specific as you could with a paid account. So the difference would be, you know, maybe I'm looking up like best nonprofits to donate to. There's a lot more people that are searching something that's broad like that than there are people typing in donate to melanoma research. And let's say I'm a nonprofit that does melanoma research. If someone's typing in donate to melanoma research, I know that they're looking to donate and I know that they want to donate to a cause that is melanoma research. So all I have to convince them once they get to our site that is that we are the person that's focused on melanoma research that they should donate to over X, Y, and Z, where on a term like donate to cancer or donate to nonprofits, like we find someone who's wanting to donate, but are they wanting to donate to an animal rights organization, environmental organization? There's a lot more questions that we have to answer. Um, and so again, the more narrow we go, the higher likelihood that that person is going to convert earlier and maybe, you know, make a donation that first time. Um, but as it gets more specific, it gets harder with the Google ad grant. So you're limited to some of those broader keywords. It's not something so broad as like the word nonprofit, like that's way too broad. Um, but again, there is, there is some limitations with it, but again, it's, it's free money. So it's not, you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Sure. Um, Eliza asked, and this was something that another person kind of followed up and also wanted the answer to, which is why I'm feeling it here. Are 501c3 organizations that start and run schools around the world eligible, so international impact and also faith-based organizations, are they eligible or ineligible? 
we we work with plenty of faith-based organizations so that's i mean it's not a problem the bigger thing that you know Google's going to care about is just kind of the language that's being used. And so um, I think with religious organizations in general, um, you know, if it's like, if it looks hateful or anything like that, like if you have that kind of information on your site, you're less likely to get approved. But I would say the average, you know, church, uh, Christian based organization, uh, Muslim organization, um, you know, Buddhist organization, we've gotten all of them approved. It's not, hasn't been a problem. And to answer the question on the schools, it's always worth trying. Um, I've gotten charter schools approved. Uh, we work with plenty of organizations that are nonprofits that focus on the education system, but are not a school themselves. Um, it even says like, you can't get daycares approved, but like, I mean, YMCA has a daycare component and YMCA can get approved. So it's always worth applying. Um, and even if they say no, it's always good to like, almost like, <laughs> try again uh because i've gotten rejected on the first time and approved on the second but um yeah. yeah yeah schools are nuanced i think we mainly see an issue if it's like a university or a private school where you know the google's wanting them to use more of the real dollars there but yeah it if your organization has um, kind of a charitable arm to it even if there are you know the, if there, even if there is a for-profit component, if there's a charitable arm, then that can get qualified. So yeah, I just want to reiterate what Reagan said. It's always worth trying because especially in the school system and education system, it's pretty nuanced. Um, Gina asked, do you need to apply for the grant annually or is it continuous and definitely what does that look like? Yeah, you just need to apply one time. So once you have the Google ad grant, it's yours and it does not go away. So that's the beauty of it. Um, Veronica asks, you keep encouraging to apply anyways, has it been your experience that any organization that currently has a fiscal sponsor has been approved? Um, not to my knowledge that as part of the stipulations for Google, um, it wouldn't qualify. Um, so I guess that would be my answer, but Reagan, do you have anything to add? My answer is going to be apply anyway. It's not the application. <laughs> it's not, it's not like you are spending 10 hours you know, writing this application and hopefully you get it and you have to explain everything. Like it's just filling out some forms. It doesn't take that long. The worst they're going to say is no, and you wasted 45 minutes, but the best case scenario, uh, you get approved and then you can focus on the harder part of building out everything after, after that, but you just got $10,000 a month. So, um, yeah, but I don't know of any, I, I can't think off the top of my head from our client roster, if we have fiscally sponsored organizations, but, um, yeah, right. that's, can't memorize every client I have. And Gina asked the same question on whether or not you need to apply annually for the Microsoft ad grant, but it sounds like that one is also similar to Google. Yeah, yeah, it's the exact same. So you just apply once. It's where you would run into issues is if you, you know, you apply and everything's all good and dandy. And then all of a sudden you're like, I think it's doing good. And you don't check on it for five years and, you know, something changes. And now you're like making like your web, a certain page of your website goes down. And then they're like, Hey, you need to fix this. You don't do it. If you're non-responsive, they can cancel your grant. And then typically the process is just going and talking to someone and saying, Oh yeah, like this person, I don't know who it was, but they messed it up. We want to try again. And they'll typically let you, um, but I've, I've seen in a couple cases where we've had to reapply at that point. But I mean, as long as you're not just like forgetting about it, you're fine for like years. Sure. And Rob asked, are Google or Microsoft ad grants geo-targeted? Yes. Yeah, so you get to choose where um, you're targeting and you can go down to a specific zip code if you wanted to do that. Um, or, you know, typically we focus on more of the, the DMA range. So, you know, I can say target people in, you know, anybody in San Diego who's searching this, you can, you know, see it or anybody in these specific zip codes, but not in these zip codes. Um, so yeah, you can, you can target them that way for sure. The bigger thing is people will only see your ads if they actually search for the term that you're wanting to go after. So the more narrow you get that audience, the less overall, like, you know, again, going back to the donate to melanoma research, if I target the whole US, there's more people searching than only people in the zip code 92106 just Got based it. on po population size. And Peter asked, can a nonprofit use ads for projects, campaigns, or joint ventures that aren't completely related back to their original organization's mission? It's a good question. I mean, it, it, it depends. I mean, I guess it would depend. Like, it doesn't always have to be tied to like what your mission statement is. You couldn't be like, 
hey, uh, Coca-Cola, like you should give us money and then we'll send ads to like, <laughs> you know, get people to buy Coca-Cola. Like obviously Google's not going to like that. Um, but, you know, if your mission is like, we want to build wells and then all of a sudden you're like, well, actually, you know, these kids need, uh, you know, shoes and you wanted to add that into it, that's okay. Um, and operating budget for the Google ad grant specifically does not matter. I mean, as long as you have your 501c3, um, that's all you really need. It's as your you know budget increases, you'll typically be able to you know either afford someone full time in house for marketing that's doing that, or an outside agency. Um, so you, what you can do with it will start to grow as your budget goes up. But there's no minimum budget requirement. You just have to have your your status. Awesome. Um, if anyone else has any final questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, I will also be dropping in the chat. If you enjoyed this workshop, we'll be back next week to cover five tips for building an anti-racist culture in your fundraising with Kia Kroon. Uh, so feel free to join us for that as well next week. Um, but if there's any final see... questions, feel free to drop them in the chat here. I did see one question much earlier about um, keyword research and how to do that. Um, there are tons of outside tools you can use. I recommend using the tools that are in the platform. Um, so inside of your Google Ad Grant account, there is a keyword research tool and you can filter down to like the exact area you want to target. You put in the keyword, it'll tell you how many people are searching that versus other similar terms to that. Because it could be like donate to cancer research or it could the same person could be typing in donate to the best cancer research organization it's the exact same like intent um just a slight variation in it so it'll show you all of them it'll show you how much search volume it has and then what i would typically do if you want to know how much of your grant you're going to spend on that is take the amount of search volume it's telling you uh take 10 percent of that and then multiply that number um uh, well, so that you take 10% of that, then you're going to take 5% of that. Cause that's how, the percentage of how many people will see your ad versus typically click on it and then multiply that number by whatever the, um, average bid is. And it'll tell you how much you're probably going to spend. So I know yeah, that's, so that'll typically be found in your keyword ad planner. And also you can use your Google search console, which are all free tools, part of yep. Google's suite as well. So if your nonprofit hasn't already installed Google analytics or things like that, you definitely want to set that up anyways. And so that can be a great way for you to get information that's valuable in terms of how people are perceiving your website and like the sorts of pathways that they're taking on your website. Awesome. With that, thank you so much everybody for joining us for today's workshop. Uh, that concludes this workshop. We'll be sending slides and replays in a couple of days from now. Everyone have a great rest of your day. All right, have a good one everybody.